The United States Declaration of Independence clearly states, when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Has America today fallen into a despotism? Look at the evidence from this 1946 National Archive film. You can roughly locate any community in the world, somewhere along a scale running all the way from democracy to despotism. Let's find out about despotism. This man makes it his job to study these things. Well, for one thing, avoid the comfortable idea that the mere form of government can of itself safeguard a nation against despotism. We also understand that the current structure of our government is a patchwork, to put it best, of overlapping responsibilities, and it really does hinder our ability to protect the homeland. President George W. Bush signed the Patriot Act, which gave law enforcement broader authority. Today we take an essential step in defeating terrorism while protecting the constitutional rights of all Americans. I've got a pen and I've got a phone. Uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions. I do what I want. When a competent observer looks for signs of despotism in a community, he looks beyond fine words and noble phrases. Many observers have found that two workable yardsticks help in discovering how near a community is to despotism the respect scale and the power scale. As a community moves towards despotism, respect is restricted to fewer people. The FBI wants you to join in on the fight against terrorism. Do you own a coffee shop or perhaps a newsstand? Well, if so, you should be wary of people paying in cash. That's right, people who pay for small purchases in cash, like coffee or gum, apparently that's a big red flag, big time. Thank you for doing your part to help keep our hometowns safe. Rocco, he's going to check you. He's just going to check you out, okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you, if you can, can you lift his shirt up? If you don't want to do it here, I can do the thing to a uh, private screening area. A community is low on a respect scale. If common courtesy is withheld from large groups of people, on account of their political attitudes. It just came out that the Internal Revenue Service has been paying extra special attention to groups that are critical of the government, putting them under intense scrutiny. That means no more illegal wiretapping of American citizens. No more national security letters to spy on citizens who are not suspected of a crime. No more tracking citizens who do nothing more than protest a misguided war. Listen, every time you make a phone call, Every time I make a phone call, every time your listeners call into the show to make a phone call, the NSA gets a record of that call. A power scale is another important yardstick of despotism. Communities which concentrate decision-making in a few hands rate low on a power scale and are moving towards despotism. You know, the Federal Reserve was created in order to concentrate power. To recommend the measures that a stricken nation in the midst of a stricken world, in the event that the national emergency is still critical, I shall ask the Congress for the one remaining instrument to meet the crisis. Broad executive power. The test of despotic power is that it can disregard the will of the people. It rules without the consent of the governed. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. When legislatures become ceremonial assemblies only and have no real control over lawmaking, their community rates low on a power scale. Your wish that I could just bypass Congress and change the law myself. Some folks who wish I could just bypass Congress. Now, I know some people want me to bypass Congress and change the laws on my own. Look beyond the legal formalities of an election in measuring a community on the power scale to see if the ballot is really free. No one who watched it or participated in it will ever forget election night 2000. We are projecting that when all the votes are counted, the state of Florida will go tonight to the vice president, Mr. Gore. So we have a change in our call 
Florida is now too close to call. We don't just have egg in our face, we've got omelet. Well, I've already shown you video out of Missouri where GOP officials attempted to railroad the selection of delegates at the St. Charles Caucus. And I also showed you video out of Athens, Clark County, Georgia, where state officials steamrolled over caucus goers by forcing an unapproved slate of delegates down their throats. I mean, you've probably read in the paper about what happened up in Maine. I mean, they, 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 it, there, there's just a lot of confusion. They said, well, let's have a recount. They said, well, we can't have a recount. They just write these numbers down on a piece of the paper and we throw them away afterwards. So it's that kind of stuff that makes you suspicious. The spread of respect and power in a community is influenced by certain conditions, which many observers measure by means of the economic distribution and information scale. If a community's economic distribution becomes slanted, its middle income groups grow smaller, and despotism stands a better chance to gain a foothold. Millions of Americans have found smaller paychecks. America's Pew Research Center reports middle class incomes in the U.S. fell over the past decade for the first time since World War II. America prided itself and understood that its health was because of a vast middle class. We're not that kind of society anymore. There's always been a gap between the wealthiest in our society and everyone else. But in the last 30 years, something changed. That gap became the Grand Canyon. This according to Oxfam, of the world's 85 richest people is equal to the three and a half billion poorest people. It's fantastic. And this is a great thing because it inspires everybody, gets the motivation to look up to the 1% and say, I want to become one of those people. I'm going to fight hard to get up to the top. This is fantastic news and of course I applaud it. One sign of a poorly balanced economy is the concentration of land ownership in the hands of a very small number of people. But Fahey was convicted of 12 misdemeanors. He's been jailed and forced to destroy his own home. So have many other valley property owners targeted by the county's code enforcement forces. Over the past week or so, it has become apparent that certain federal agencies have, in a number of instances, acted rather intentionally to cause what I would consider undue hardship for the purpose of making a political point. In Nevada, an elderly couple was kicked out of their home uh, because their home was built on federal land. I'm getting scared. I'm really getting scared, you know. Um, I'd really make it on what I have now. When farmers lose their farms, they lose their independence. Multi-billion dollar globally operating biotech agriculture giant takes on a 76-year-old American farmer based in Indiana. Unfortunately, the Obama administration has been walking lockstep with Monsanto and basically has taken some pro-GM people from Monsanto and related organizations and put them into key positions like food safety czar, like USDA uh, secretary, like USD, USAID director. So basically, if we're dealing with the federal government, we're dealing with an arm of Monsanto. But I mean, let's be realistic. Money talks, lobbyists talk. Uh, U.S. opinion doesn't necessarily change policy. To the extent that this condition exists throughout a nation, the likelihood of despotism is increased. If this condition exists over the nation as a whole, so that the control of jobs and business opportunities is in a few hands, despotism stands a good chance. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? We are absolutely slaves to central banks. Another sign of a poorly balanced economy is a taxation system that presses heaviest on those least able to pay. Hundreds of companies are saying Obamacare will raise the cost of health insurance for their workers, so they're cutting many full-time employees down to part-time. Corporations are legal fictions, and as such, they don't pay taxes. Only people pay taxes. So if you impose a tax on a corporation, they're going to raise the price of the product so people pay the tax. They're going to lower dividends. Again, people pay the tax and they're going to lay off workers, again, people pay the tax. A community rates low on an information scale when the press, radio, and other channels of communication are controlled by only a few people. Our major news organizations have really almost become monopolized. There's only like three. Our media today is into creating the news rather than reporting it and when citizens have to accept what they're told. 
If you have ever said this administration lied to us a thousand times about Iraq, the war, and Al-Qaeda, and a new study confirming the administration only lied about those vital matters 935 times. In communities of this kind, despotism stands a good chance. See how a community trains its teachers. Young people cannot be trusted to form their own opinion. This business about open-mindedness is nonsense. It's a waste of time trying to teach students who think for themselves. Common Core has a poem now. 85th grade students recited this together at their promotion ceremony. It's our job to tell them. And it's called We, we Learned, Learned More with, with Common Core. 2009, the National Governors Association and the Council of Chief State School Officers partnered with Achieve Inc., a nonprofit that received millions of funding uh, from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Keep in mind, the specific standards were never voted upon by Congress, the Department of Education, state or local governments. Are you smarter? than a common core fourth grader. The problem is, Mr. Yamato's class has 18 students. If the class counts around by a number and ends with 90, what number did they count by? If they solve it in those two steps, they get it marked wrong. They are expected to draw 18 circles with 90 hash marks, solving this problem in exactly 108 steps. Runner and cubes are strategies for... Learning more with Common Core. The standards left students with an empty skill set lacking literary knowledge. Let's talk about the goals of Common Core. Remember the quote by Hitler? Give me your children and in 10 years I'll change society. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Why don't we just manufacture robots instead of students? They last longer and they always do what they're told. Economy, government, revolutionary war. We, we learned, learned more with, with Common Core. There is compulsory environmental education as a part of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child regularly monitors the countries that are involved. They, they, they tell them if their television programs are not sufficiently promoting the agenda. Questions are not encouraged. Have you got a textbook? Yes, ma'am. Does it say here that our law courts are always just? Yes, ma'am. Then how dare you question the fact? Wherever there's a child, the treaty prevails. We learned more with Common Core. And when teachers put such training into practice, Despotism stands a good chance. These children are being taught to accept uncritically whatever they're told. I want you to bless him. Speak a blessing to him. Once you do that, reach your hand to speak a blessing to him. And if books, and newspapers and the radio are efficiently controlled, the people will read and accept exactly what the few in control want them to. They want obedient workers, obedient workers, people who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. What sort of community do you live in? Where would you place it on a democracy despotism scale? The lower your community rates on economic distribution and information scales, the lower it is likely to rate on respect and power scales, and thus to approach despotism. What happens in a single community is the problem of its own citizens. But it is also the problem of us all, because as communities go, so goes the nation.